What do you want to be when you grow up? The South African Civil Aviation Authority wants to help you get future ready. And we have prepared a video about aviation medicine to help you along the way. The SACAA's mandate is to develop and enforce laws that maintain the safety and security of civil aviation in South Africa. From the regulation of airplanes, airports, air traffic towers, to even the people working in aviation. The SACAA is committed to making sure that all crew and passengers have a safe journey to and from their destination. Welcome once again to Korea TV. Guys, we're here to help you figure this thing of life up once again. I'm sure as a teenager, you're sitting at home wondering, what am I going to do with myself? Where to from here? You might be in high school wondering, what are the various career options that are open to you? Well. We are, we are hoping that one day you'll consider aviation as a possible career choice. So today we've got another exciting episode for you where we'll be talking about aviation medicine. I'm sure you're sitting there wondering, what is that? Don't worry, we've got that covered. Today I've got in studio with me aviation medicine personnel that I'm going to be talking to. And they'll be giving you further insights into what this industry entails and the various job opportunities that are available for you to pursue. So with that being said, all you need to do is just assess what do I like, what am I good at, and you might just find that it might be suitable for you. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, so we've got Dr. Ali in studio with us, and we've got Kama Melesi. So I'm just going to give you briefly an opportunity to introduce yourselves to the learner at home. Who are you and what do you do? We're demonstrating how we're going to do an aircraft audit. Uh, this is an air ambulance and we want to point out the different things that we would be looking at um, before we certify an aircraft or before we say that it can be um, used for as an air ambulance. So one of the things we look at is to see that all the equipment is secured uh, properly. Um, for example, um, we look at these machines over here. Uh, we want to be sure that they're secured properly so that they are strapped. Um, so you can see if I move it, it doesn't move too much. Um, the same thing over here. Um, these as well, these, um, uh, these, bo these bottles over here, these fluid bottles, um, they need to be secured properly. Uh, as well as this uh, sharps container. A sharps container is used uh, for your needles um, and all your sharp objects um, in a medical emergency. It has to be secured properly. Um, the other thing that we like to check is the oxygen cylinders to see that they're secured properly. So in this aircraft, the oxygen cylinders are in the back. Um, and the oxygen actually, um, these are, uh, this is where the valves are. Um, you will attach your oxygen pipes over here. Um, so we would, after we're done on the inside of the aircraft, go to the back of the aircraft and check that, um, that, this, that the cylinders are secured properly. The other thing we like to check is the stretcher itself. Uh, we want to ensure that the stretcher is properly secured so the patient doesn't move during flight. Um, also, we want to be sure that the patient does not obstruct um, the pilot's view in any way. So we'd go around the front and just make sure um, that the way the patient is placed, um, the pilot's work is not hampered in any way whatsoever. Earlier, Dr. Ali mentioned the things that we actually uh, concentrate on when we're doing an audit for a helicopter air ambulance. What I'm going to take you through this session are the things that we look at specifically when we're doing an audit for a fixed wing air ambulance. Of key importance is that there should be ample space for the medical personnel to move because some of the equipment is actually stored at the, uh, the storage area. So if there is need for them to go move anything from that side, there should be space for them to move up and down the aircraft cabin for them to reach whatever they're looking for. The lighting inside the cabin should be sufficient because nine times out of ten you find that the operators of fixed wing aircrafts that uh, operate as air ambulances, they have a 24 hour um, operation, meaning that the patients may be uh, transported during the night. And at that time, you do not want the light from within the cabin 
to disturb the flight deck or the, the, the cabin that are sitting in the cockpit. So for that specific uh, reason, we ensure that the aircraft has got a screen, a door that actually closes the cabin, that separates the cabin from the cockpit. Meaning that whenever there is need for the caregivers to put the lights on for them to be able to care for the patient, the light does not actually get into the cockpit where it can actually uh, disturb the pilots for the flying duties. Fixed wing aircrafts fly longer distances and at a higher altitude. What is key is that the communication system within the aircraft should be such that at whatever level the aircraft is flying, they are able to communicate uninterrupted with either the operations room or the receiving hospital where the patient is being transported to. So we look at the communication system that it is functioning optimally. Uh, so, my name is Dr. Fatima Ali. I'm a Senior Aviation Medical Assessor at the Aviation Medicine Department at the Civil Aviation Authority. Um, I'm from Johannesburg. Okay. <laughs> and uh, what we do basically uh, in the aviation, well, aviation medicine is a medical speciality um, that examines the health of uh, air crew, would be pilots, cabin crew, and your air traffic controllers. Um, and uh, basically what we have is we have doctors in the periphery all around the country in their practices that do medicals on behalf of the South African Civil Aviation Authority. Okay. They then submit their medicals to us, to our department, mm -hmm. um, via an electronic system called AMPIC. Mm -hmm. And the doctors and nurses in our office would then verify, um, in simple terms verify means look over those medicals and ensure that they, you know, that the health of these personnel meets our standards. Okay, wonderful. Yeah. Khama? Thank you so much, Zandi. My name is Khama Melesi. Mm. I'm an aviation professional nurse, okay. and I work for the AFMED office here in CAA. Okay. As we all know that CAA is a regulatory body. Okay. Our office is primarily uh, looking at the various regulations that affect uh, the health of all our aviators. Mm -hmm. And we also look after the compliance of these specific uh, regulations. Okay. So you find that we have specific areas of work that we need to do to make sure that all the aviators or the stakeholders within the uh, aviation sector comply with these uh, regulations. Mm -hmm. And this would be doing oversights at airports to make sure that our airports are compliant with the regulations to ensure the safety of the passengers that are going through the airports. Mm -hmm. Our airlines, they comply with the procedures mm. to ensure that the safety and security of the passengers yes. that are carried in our airlines, it's actually uh, secured. Okay. So that is primarily what we do in the Civil Aviation Authority in our office, specifically called the Aviation Medicine Office, okay. to ensure that all of their aviators or the stakeholders in the sector comply with these regulations. Wonderful. By the way, they're referring to us. With my license and if my aviation medical certificate is not valid, they won't let me fly, just so you know. Um, but before we go too far with that, I just want to rewind just a little bit. I'm sure we're all familiar with what medicine is, but just bear in mind here we're talking about what aviation medicine. So I just want to quickly zoom in on that. How does aviation medicine differ from normal medicine? What is it? Just very briefly. Okay, so aviation medicine deals primarily with the health and safety of people involved in the aviation space. Okay. Um, uh, it's, it's similar to occupational health in okay. certain ways where, for example, you know, in the mines you have doctors that look after um, the staff in the mines uh, or in other industries, for example, um, uh, in, at the sea, uh, 
in this, uh, what is it called? The, the shipping industry. You okay. have people who look after the health and safety of those people. Yes. So aviation medicine looks after the health and safety of air crew, yes. primarily. Okay. By air crew, they're talking as pilots, air traffic controllers, and to make sure we're okay up here and we're okay physically as well. <laughs> so, so, passengers. Yeah, so we look at the physical and the mental health yes. um, of these air crew. Okay, wonderful. Uh, see, I get it. I'm sure you guys got that as well. Okay, now let's take it back. Like I said, growing up, I, wanted, I knew I wanted to be a doctor, if not a pilot. So then, but I had no idea there was something called aviation medicine. Then how do you end up knowing or being passionate or interested in aviation medicine? Where did the passion start for you? Okay, so I've always wanted to be a doctor from the time I was a little girl. Okay. Um, I grew up knowing that I wanted to be a doctor. Um, but as I grew older uh, and as I went through school and through university, um, I actually developed a passion for occupational health. Okay. Um, and aviation medicine is an arm of occupational health. Okay. Uh, for me, you know, you spend most of your life working mm. um, and you, you give all your health to this work that you're doing. Yes. But at the end of it, you know, you should come out as a healthy person as well. Mm. Um, and, and for me, um, aviation medicine ensures that these air crew actually remain healthy um, while they service us. And when they come out of this career, they also are healthy to lead a, a life going forward. Wonderful, wonderful. That was well said. Kama, where did the passion start for you? In actual fact, when I grew up mm. in my primary school, high school, etc., I mm. didn't know that I would end up in the aviation sector. Yes. Because what I did, I studied uh, uh, a diploma in nursing, general okay. nursing, and that was followed by obstetric nursing. Mm. And then later I did uh, community health nursing. Okay. And then followed that with a diploma in primary health care nursing. Okay. So for the better part of my life, I spent it in a, a primary health care setting. Okay. Like the clinics we have in our communities where people come in uh, with various ailments and then they nurse at that level. Yes. But then I later joined the pharmaceutical industry. Mm -hmm. And after that, I found myself in the aviation uh, sector. Yes. Because there was a position that was uh, advertised and I was also like taken aback a mm. because I, I didn't know that they had people of my uh, profession in the sector. Yes. So when I applied, I came for an interview and I was quite successful. Mm. But it was actually an eye opener. Mm. And I, I want to make this quite clear because only then did I realize that there is quite a lot that one can do uh, with your nursing uh, background in the sector. Yes. Because when you go to areas like um, your airliners, mm. some of the uh, the crew members, uh, cabin crew yes. or flight attendants mm. are actually professional nurses. Mm. And some of them are actually used to train first aid okay. to the crew because crew members or flight attendants mm. are actually safety officers. Yes. Should there be an occurrence on board the aircraft where a person falls ill mm. or they suspect a person of having a, a communicable disease of some sort, they are the people that are going to attend to that person. Yes. So nursing is key in the aviation sector. You mm. find it not only in the CAA, but you find it in the various airliners as well as the rest of the other sectors within the aviation yes. industry. Wow, that was quite insightful. I hope you guys are learning yeah. as much as I do. Dr. Ali, let me come back to you. Um, let's look at now the path, the study path, in terms of what one needs to pursue from high school. What subjects does one need to do in order to be able to pursue um, a qualification at tertiary. Please take me sh through that from high school, tertiary. What is it that one would need to do? Okay, so subjects that are important at a high school level, um, yes. if you want to become a doctor, uh, would be um, you need to do maths and science uh, and biology. Okay. Um, after that, uh, what I did was I went, I did a Bachelor of Medicine and Surgery at the University of the Vatvartistrand. Okay. Um, there are many universities around uh, the country that offer this degree. Okay. Um, and after that, uh, I had to do three years compulsory government service, which would be two years of internship, okay. um, which I did in a hospital in Johannesburg and a year of community service. Mm -hmm. um, and thereafter, I did some locum work um, so for those who don't know, a locum work is basically uh, when a doctor uh, has a practice but he goes on holiday, is unable to attend to his duties, then they bring in an extra doctor to assist. Okay. 
Uh, after that, I actually worked in the insurance industry, um, doing insurance medicals. Okay. And thereafter, I came to CAA. Um, and I started working in the aviation medicine department here. Wow, that is very interesting. And then from high school, how long did the period of study take? Okay. Um, so the so the degree, mm -hmm. uh, the Bachelor of Medicine and Surgery is six year degree. Okay. Um, thereafter, there's two years of internship and a year of community service. Okay. Um, and thereafter, um, you can after you've done that as a doctor, you can then decide which speciality or which area of medicine you'd like to go into. Okay. Um, and then for the study would depend on what you choose. Oh, okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. And then Khama, with your particular career path, what are the different options that are available in terms of study from subjects at high school level? Are there any particular benchmarks in terms of the, the marks that they're required? And where can they go to study further um, after high school? Is it particular colleges, universities? Absolutely. What are the options? There are various uh, nursing colleges okay. where one can actually enroll and uh, undertake your studies. Okay. Uh, what will be helpful to uh, students or pupils is for them to concentrate on health sciences. Okay. For example, your biology is key. In high school? In high school, okay. yes, as well as your physiology mm -hmm. and uh, mathematics. Okay. So these are some of the subjects that will actually give you an advantage mm. uh, to actually gain entry into these colleges okay. and simply because as soon as you start your first year and your second year you're going to deal with stuff like your uh, anatomy, mm. physiology of the human body yes. for you to be to, to, to understand how the, the body works, works how yes. it functions mm. and then you will go on to the pathology side to say you what could go wrong and when it, is, when it is wrong, how do we get it right? Okay. And then for the mathematics, it's important because there are some calculations that one has to do, mm. especially when you come to your pharmacology uh, lessons where you have to know how to calculate medication for patients, etc. So those are key mm -hmm. and uh, the pupils must try to attain uh, very high marks in those. Okay. And once you have those, it, there should be no uh, obstruction for entry into these colleges. Okay. And then once they're at the colleges, are there particular degrees or courses that they're supposed to, to take? No, nursing specifically, you will do the, the nursing course. What we have currently is they have like combined several uh, aspects of nursing. Okay. They have the general nursing combined with psychiatric nursing, with community health nursing, mm -hmm. and then obstetrics. Yes. And then it's a four year course. Mm -hmm. So you, you, you actually leave the college with uh, basically four qualifications okay. because you will have your general nursing, mm -hmm. you will have obstet obstetrics nursing and mm -hmm. in males it's referred to as aquaculture okay. and then you will have your community health nursing as well as your psychiatric nursing. Okay. So you basically have all combined in one okay. and then you, once you have that, it, it just opens up uh, a whole host of uh, avenues for you with your nursing uh, diploma. Okay. All right, wonderful. So with that being said, what are then the different career options a learner at home can pursue? Because we've just looked at your personal journeys now. Are there any other alternatives, maybe from the time you've acquired your qualification, that they can do differently from the, the course or the route your particular careers have taken? Is there a deviation? Um, so uh, are we looking at aviation medicine specifically? Yes. Okay, so with aviation medicine, um, we work at the regulator. As Mr. Yes. Malaysia said previously, we work at the South African Civil Aviation Authority. Yes. Um, ours is a regulatory, uh, we have regulatory duties. Yes. Um, the other route you could take is if you have a, if you're a medical doctor, um, you could become an aviation medical examiner. Okay. Um, and the aviation medical examiners basically um, work on behalf of the South African Civil Aviation Authority mm -hmm. and they do medicals um, in their practices wherever they may be. Okay. They then submit the medicals to us mm -hmm. um, and we uh, and we would check double check these medicals to make mm -hmm. sure that it meets our standards yes. as per our protocols. Okay. Um, so these doctors would then have to do a two-week uh, aviation medicine course okay. um, and uh, once they have a certificate in aviation medicine they can then do the medicals um, on our behalf. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, other other things that we, that you could do um, uh, would be um, uh, what, but sort of the, but actually that's more for us. Um, mm -hmm. We could actually uh, work. We we also oversight the airports okay. um, and the airlines um, mm -hmm. to make sure that they comply to um, to the protocols that we have in place. Wonderful. And you mentioned a two week course that doctors can do. Where is this course offered? 
So the course is offered by the South African Civil Aviation Authority okay. uh, in, con in conjunction with Safako Mahati University. Okay. Uh, it happens once a year. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, a once a year for two weeks, and the dates would be published on our website. Okay. Uh, anyone who's interested can look on our website, and um, they can apply from accordingly. Oh, wow, wonderful. I didn't know that. I hope you guys are learning as well. Mm -hmm. and Kama, in your line of work, what are the, in, the alternatives? In our line of work, what uh, other professional nurses can actually look into to be part of the aviation sector yes. is they can actually go on to do uh, first aid courses mm -hmm. and get instructor's uh, certificates. Okay. And once they have all of those, they can then apply to the CAA to be um, designated. Okay. And once they are designated, they will be doing work on behalf of the CAA. Okay. But then they will be providing first aid courses to all their aviation training organizations okay. where pilots are trained, mm -hmm. where cabin crew are trained, and all the others. Mm -hmm. and those schools, as part of their curriculum, they need to have a first aid uh, curriculum. Yes. And then this first aid curriculum can only be taught by someone who's been designated by the Civil Aviation Authority to mm. provide that type of training. Okay. So we've got a whole host of aviation training um, organizations nationally. Yes. So and each of these needs to have that specific person as soon as they have students who will take them through the, uh, the first aid course, which is actually a necessity for cabin crew, for pilots. And like I said, they are all um, safety officers. They yes. need to have the basic understanding of first aid, how yes. to provide it, and they can actually go on to actually assist if uh, 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 an uh, expectant lady mm. gives birth on board a flying aircraft, yes. uh, the cabin crew will be able to assist with that. Yes. Or go on to give uh, life support for a person who is unconscious on board an aircraft. Yes. So it's key that all uh, aviation training organizations mm. have someone who will actually uh, assist with uh, providing with a first aid training that they actually need to provide to their students. Wow, I'm learning a lot. And while you're on that, then where would one go to get that type of training or do that course? We do have a few uh, trainings where one can enroll. We've got quite a few uh, nationally. Okay. But once you have attained the certificates... Where, is the certi where does one attain that certificate? From these training... Uh, schools where okay. you can actually uh, get your ACLS, yes. BLS, mm -hmm. and an instructor's uh, certificate. Oh, okay. Once you have attained those from these uh, training centers that mm -hmm. specifically provide uh, first aid training, yes. then you can, with that certificate, apply to the CAA where together with that certificate a few other requirements will be looked at yes. and once you're successful you will be designated and you will then be in a position okay. to start providing the training okay. uh, to all the aviation uh, students, your cabin crew mm -hmm. at their uh, training centers, pilots mm -hmm. as well as your air traffic controllers. And where can one get the information on these training centers? I think our website will have that information. The CAA yes. website. No, the CAA website will have that information. Okay. All right. Yes. Wonderful. This has been so insightful. I hope you guys are learning. I've learned so much. I thought I knew, but now I'm starting to feel clueless. Um, just as we approach the end of our show, do you have any words of encouragement, any words of wisdom to the learner at home? Indeed. Uh, what we would advise uh, our learners and everyone out there is that uh, dreams do come true. Mm. Whatever you are studying, make sure that you attain the best of uh, results because for those results, you will be able to get into uh, higher learning institutions like your colleges, like your universities, and any other thing that you'd like to do with your life because mm. education is the basis of everything. It, yes. It's not only something that will give you employment, but it's something that will take you through your life mm. as a person. You actually need the basic uh, understanding of life for you to be successful in whatever you do. Wonderful. Dr. Ali, any last words of wisdom? Um, I would say definitely reach for the stars. Whatever your career path may be, wherever you want to go in life, work hard. Um, give it your all, give it your best, mm. and you will certainly achieve whatever it is that you want to achieve. Wonderful. Guys, I hope you've learned. Um, I've learned a whole lot. This has been very exciting and insightful. Hell, I'm even thinking maybe if I shouldn't reconsider <laughs> my chosen career path. But I hope you've learned as much as I have. Um, on that note, 
hit that like button, subscribe, um, click on not notifications bell so that you do get notified about future episodes that we might film to give you more information. So guys, don't miss out on such opportunities. Like we say, the sky is not the limit, the sky is home for us. So ultimately, I hope you're learning that your attitude will determine your altitude. So on that note, we're out. Till next time, goodbye.